Welcome to this presentation titled An Analysis of Critical Alternatives in the RCPSP AS, presented by myself, Tom, and co-authored by Professor Mario van Hoeken. In the traditional RCPSP, a set of predefined activities needs to be scheduled subject to president's relations or technological relations and resource constraints with the sole objective of minimizing the project make spend. However, this traditional problem is characterized by a multitude of assumptions and therefore, in recent years, a lot of researchers have investigated extensions of this problem in order to make it more practically relevant. They investigated flexible resource profiles, activity splitting, but also the existence of multiple modes was highly investigated in the last decades. In multi-mode RCPSP, for each activity, there exists different execution modes, and this is a unique combination of an activity duration and resource requirement. As a result, in this multi-mode uh, pro project scheduling problem, we can include the trade-off between cost and time at the project level. However, all of these extensions still consider a fixed project structure. That means that the project manager prior to project start should be able to identify all its activities and the president's relations. However, in today's highly complex and uncertain project environment, this is not only impossible, but even impractical. Let me explain this. In complex multi-year projects, it's for a project manager not always possible to uniquely identify all the activities, technologies, and resources that he will need. But even in an uncertain project environment, such a rigid project structure might be impractical because you need some degree of flexibility in order to have project success. Therefore, my promoter and myself have proposed an extension of this traditional RCPSP called the resource constraint project scheduling problem with alternative subgraphs. In this problem, we identify work packages. Those are sub projects within your project. And we identify alternative ways to execute these work packages. As a result, there is now a combination of a selection and a scheduling sub problem. The selection sub problem means that you have to find the best set of alternatives in your project and then the scheduling sub problem needs to schedule these selected activities based on the president's relations and resource constraints similar to the RCPSP. The objective is to select for each work package exactly one alternative such that the make span of the project can be minimized. In recent years, several researchers have investigated variants of this generic problem, each with their own problem features and with their unique terminology. They call it flexible project structures, alternative activity chains, or alternative production processes. Therefore, today, multiple solution approaches have been proposed, such as different meta-heuristic approaches to solve the sub-problems of selection and scheduling in a sequential or integrated way. Meta-heuristics are very interesting because they allow us to find the best sets of alternatives in a project structure and do this in a very fast way, so we are able to rapidly generate high-quality schedules. However, the disadvantage is that in most research, only the single best solution with the single best set of alternatives is reported. From a theoretical point of view, this makes sense because as researchers, we are searching for the best uh, solution that we can find. However, from a practical project management perspective, maybe a lot of information is lost that is captured in these non-selected alternatives. Therefore, uh, my promoter and myself have proposed another uh, solution approach where we construct a, so a set of so-called backup schedules. So we are still interested in finding the optimal project structure, but we also want to find several good sets of alternatives in the project structure that we can then call alternative project structures or backup schedules. The idea is that we can then dynamically, so this means during project execution, switch from this initial schedule to an alternative schedule, a backup schedule, in case that there are changes in the project environment that make the initial schedule no longer optimal. 
We observed that especially the selection subproblem of the RCPSP AS is highly complex, not only due to a large number of alternatives that we observe in practically sized projects, but also the complex relations between these alternatives. So our question was then, would it be possible to fix certain alternatives in order to limit the number of possible combinations of alternatives in this selection subproblem? Or the question was, how can we identify important alternatives in the project structure? And those are then alternatives that the project manager needs to fix with high certainty in his project structure and therefore does not have to think about in the selection subproblem. This results in three main contributions of our research. First, we present a technique to analyze the impact of alternatives on the solution quality. We also define two criteria that help us to analyze a set of generated solutions, and we validate our technique on both artificial and empirical data. The solution approach consists of four steps. First, we have to generate a set of high quality solutions. There are different ways to do this. First of all, you could construct a set of schedules by iteratively generating a single heuristic solution. The advantage is that this is a very easy and fast technique, but there is no guarantee that you will obtain high quality solutions. So another option is to use advanced exact procedures because then you have a guarantee that your solutions will be of high quality. The problem is of course that we have to keep in mind the objective of our research. We want to advise, give guidelines to project managers, almost pre-process their projects in order to give them information about important alternatives. If you then use complex and time-consuming procedures to generate solutions, this might reduce the practical application of the technique. So we decided to go for a middle way, which is to use a meta-heuristic procedure to generate a set of high-quality solutions. Meta-heuristic procedures are fast, so that is good. And by definition, they also consider a set of high-quality solutions either by means of different uh, populations, if you use, for example, a genetic algorithm, or by means of an improvement procedure, for example, the taboo search. Secondly, we then only retain a small subset of only the best schedules from this initial set of high quality solutions. Therefore, we identify a first important criteria in our research, and that is what we call the schedule diversity, or T1, and this is the size of the subset of these best schedules. As we consider more and more schedules to be the best schedules, then not only the diversity between these schedules will increase, but also the overall solution quality in our subset will be decreased because each additional schedule that we add to our subset will have a slightly lower solution quality than the schedules already present in the subset. In the next step, we're then going to analyze which alternatives are selected for each work package in all of these solutions in the subset. There we need a second criteria called the choice frequency or T2. And this is actually, uh, it means that an alternative according to us is only preferred when it is observed in at least a certain amount of schedules of this subset. In other words, we're going to determine the frequency of each alternative in the subset and then compare this with a threshold T2, which is like a required frequency before we can call an alternative preferred. Once we have done this, we now know what the important alternatives are. That is, we distinguish between open choices and closed choice. In an open choice, this means that there is no single active alternative that occurs significantly more than the other alternatives for a work package. Or in other words, the frequency of no alternative is higher than the required frequency for a work package. In closed choices, it happens that for a single alternative, the frequency is higher than the required frequency or threshold T2. This means that a single alternative is selected a sufficient number of times to be labeled a preferred alternative. Now, what we can do is we can close these closed choices. They can be fixed in advance because we know the preferred alternative for the work package for these choices. However, 
the selection for the open choices remains to be determined by the project manager. The number of closed choices is important in our research and impacted by the two criteria. First, the schedule diversity, because of course, as we consider more diverse schedules, this means the subset of schedules is larger, then the probability that we can close a choice will be reduced because more and more different alternatives will be observed in our subset. Secondly, there's also the impact of the choice frequency. As we use a more and more strict threshold to label alternatives preferred, the lower the probability that they can be closed. The number of closed choices has an impact on, first of all, the complexity of our problem. This is the objective of our research, that is that as we can close more choices, this will result in a lower complexity of the selection subproblem because more and more alternatives will be fixed. But it also has an impact on the solution quality because as a higher number of closed choices will exist, this will result in a lower solution quality because the search space of our problem will be reduced. You can look at it like this. When we fix a certain alternative, there are two options. Either this was the best alternative to be selected and then this has no impact on the solution quality or we have incorrectly fixed an alternative that was not the best one to fix and in that case it will have a negative impact on our final solution quality. Or in other words, if you need to close choices then this is a trade-off between trying to lower the complexity of the problem at hand but hopefully retaining a sufficiently high solution quality. Also, we need to consider two aspects in this analysis. That is, in case that there is a low variability in the frequency between alternatives, or there is a low strictness, then this increases the probability that we mistakenly remove some choices from the search. In order to show the uh, results of our solution approach, we have conducted some computational experiments first on empirical data. This was because in practice we observed that scheduling in case that projects have alternative project structures becomes highly complex, not only because of the large number of activities in real life projects, but especially because of the large number of feasible combinations of alternatives. Therefore, if we could focus the project manager's attention on key choices, then this would allow him or her to deal with larger projects. First of all, when we increased the schedule diversity and choice frequency from low to high values, we observed that the number of closed choices as expected decreased. However, we could still observe suboptimal alternative project structures that could be fixed with a high certainty. This means that project managers could focus their attention on a lower number of open choices than the total number of choices in the initial problem. To, be, to make this more practical, one out of three of the choices could be closed in our case studies, independent of the high values of T1 and T2, so these are not really good settings if you want to have a high number of closed choices. So even for worst case settings of T1 and T2, we could still close one out of three uh, choices. We also observed robust choices. Robust choices are so-called choices that remain closed independent of the settings T1 and T2. We observed this because most choices at a certain point can no longer be closed when we keep increasing the schedule diversity or choice frequency. However, some choices could only be forced open if we increase the schedule diversity to very high values, higher values than we would normally do. In other words, we could identify robust choices for which the alternatives were fixed with a high certainty. Also, we categorized different types of choices. Based on the real life case studies, we identified that alternatives exist because of a difference in either duration, cost, or the resources used, but maybe also the non-implementation of certain activities, or there is a difference in activity sequence for the work package. We observed that most choices that are duration or cost-based could be closed relatively easy, 
while many choices based on the activity sequence could be choice could be closed with less certainty so they remained open most of the time in other words this is an important finding because now we can advise project managers on which kinds of choices are typically more closed or more open in the project then finally we validated this generic approach based on a large set of artificial projects we observed first of all that the number of closed choices indeed increases as t1 and t2 increase a uh, decrease sorry as t1 and t2 increase luckily because this is also what we expect but we observed that the relative number of closed choices is lower compared to the case studies also the number of closed choices is more robust that means it does not drastically change for different settings in other words the key trends for the empirical data were validated in the artificial data but it's harder to identify preferred choices in artificial data this is probably because the data generation procedure generates more balanced alternatives than there would be in real life i thank you for your attention